like her because English is my first language. When I started learning Spanish, I could speak it better than I could understand it because my grandparents died when I was three years old, so I didn't hear it in the house. But it's important not to be ashamed of who you are. So when I teach, I do it bilingually, and I let the students know and ed other educators know that don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't feel afraid to trip and fall. Just laugh, pick yourself up, and move forward. And so this is how we discover who we are. I've had the opportunity to travel all over California with my partner, Don Juan Johnny Gonzalez. He's a, a Chicano architectural designer, muralist, and sculptor who the Getty Foundation and UCLA has credited for creating the first Chicano mural in East Los Angeles called The Birth of Our Art. And so we put together, thank you, we put together a multicultural and Chicano Mexicano traveling our gallery live stage production. We travel to universities, colleges, and public schools from th all throughout California talking about not only our history, but the interrelationship with other cultures. A lot of you may not know that the East LA Chicano mural movement and the rock and roll movement included African American musicians. My partner performed with the Righteous Brothers, the Remingtons, Cleve Duncan and the Penguins, the Olympics, Don and Dewey, who were coming into East LA to perform with Chicano rock and roll bands. And so this brings people together of all cultures. Uh, we're now also the co-founders and co-chairs of the Coalition to Save the First Street Store Mural Wall. It's a two-story, 175-foot, uh, 18-panel mural wall that my partner redesigned this department store that was owned by a Jewish family in East LA, redesigned it to look like the California Missions, and then uh, it was in Time Magazine. It was part of this whole Chicano mural movement that got international publicity. Uh, it was going to be demolished. We put together a Chicano Jewish multi-ethnic coalition and saved it. We're restoring it, enhancing it with a Quetzalcoatl pyramid fountain. And we're going to have a big dedication. We're hopefully hoping by the end of the summer. And we want to invite everybody to be there. But I want to end talking about an important work that I'm doing today. Because with all of our traditional cultures, we tend to forget the elders of our family, active senior citizens who are taken for granted. They're the grandparents who are taking care of the children, the grandchildren, when young adults are working one or two jobs, going to school, trying to have a better career. They're the caregivers for the elderly and for, for the disabled. And they're a volunteer, powerful workforce that volunteers in schools, libraries, for political campaigns. And it's just taken for granted that they're supposed to do this work. And they're caregivers, and they're normally, usually women. And so I, I put together as founder and chair of the Coalition to Save Older Adult Education. And we're working with our city political leaders, with the Los Angeles Aging Advocacy Coalition, and uh, which includes AARP, Partners in Care Foundation, St. Barnabas Senior Services, uh, Alta Med Health Services, uh, that are working together to reinstate older adult education with Los Angeles Unified School District. And so this teaches active senior citizens computer technology. You all take for granted computers, iPads, where seniors, I remember my dad asked me, what's dot com? I don't know what dot com is. And, and you know, so they need their special teachers to stay healthy, to stay active. You don't want children to become the caregivers of their grandparents. We want active of seniors to remain the caregivers for the grandkids to help empower the family, especially low-income families who can't afford to send their kids to a, to a um, child care center. I want to just say that I'm really touched by the personal, really raw experiences that the people today have shared. You know, I, as many, have suffered sexual harassment, but sexual harassment, uh, you know, I can't compare it, 
but psychologically you always know that you're a target you always have to be careful what you say how you dress what you do and you know my mother who was this powerful woman lived uh, was really lived during uh, evolutionary transition she had one foot in the water where she felt comfortable, another foot on the earth where she stood empowered, and then her wings were starting to spread, to fly like the butterfly, but then she would return to where it was safe. And she would pull me back. Here, she didn't realize she created a monster because everything she taught me, I wanted to take it to another level. I was the, the first single woman in my family who bought a home. And it's a thank you, thank you. <laughs> and instead of being celebrated, as you have done for me today, I was ridiculed because why didn't I wait to get married and have a man buy the house for me? Now, now this sounds archaic that maybe you think many of you who are very progressive would never think this way, but as we celebrate our traditions, our cultural heritage, we have to distinguish the difference between tradition and oppression. That we want to be able to understand that our diverse, multi-ethnic, uh, multi-generational families have so much to share. But we also need to shed that cocoon and recognize what is holding us back. And usually, I have to say, it wasn't until I received recognition from others that those who were close to me started understanding the importance of what I was doing. And so working with organizations like these that are sponsoring this event today, including yourself with others, that empowers you to know you're not alone because for so many years I felt totally alone. To know that you're not alone and the people you care for will see that and then they will start beginning to support you. And that's how our society begins to evolve and go to the next level. Thank you so much for having me here.